Tanya Avrith. And I'm Holly Clark, host of the Infuse Classroom Podcast, a proud member of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to right now. The opinions expressed are those of each individual host. Be sure to check out all of our other great podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com and get ready because the learning begins in three, two, one. Coming up on episode number 132 of the House of EdTech podcast, I've got an EdTech recommendation that will help you use Google Forms quizzes more effectively. And we're going to talk about not fearing education technology. Strike up the band. Welcome to the House of EdTech podcast. I am your host, Chris Nessie. The House of Ed Tech explores how technology is changing the way teachers teach and the impact that technology is having in education. I discuss technology that is changing our classrooms and schools, and I share tools and tips that you can hear today and use tomorrow. You're going to hear the stories of teachers, leaders, and creators just like you. The purpose? Whether you use it or not, technology is changing the way you teach and how your students learn. Hey, howdy, hey. Welcome to the House of Ed Tech podcast. So glad you're making this podcast part of your anytime, anywhere professional development. Development? Let's go with development. Yes, let's go with professional development. Welcome to this episode. So glad you're here. All right. So we have lots of new listeners who have been saying hello to me and the House of Ed Tech Twitter on Twitter. <laughs> so, uh, hello. I'm so glad there are so many more new people listening and interacting with the podcast on social media. I love connecting with you. And if I haven't connected with you yet, hey, at Mr. Nessie on Twitter, at House of Ed Tech, would love to say hello and chat, answer questions, and just uh, get to know you. You sort of know me because I'm talking to you right now. So I'd like to hear from you. So make sure you say hello after you listen to this episode or really any episode. It doesn't matter. If you listen, you like it, even if you don't like it, I want to hear about that too. Please question what I'm doing here. Speaking of connecting, as we start the show, I have more information about the ISTE 2019 meetup. I've made a couple of decisions and hopefully this works for you. So let's get together, you and me, Sunday, June 23rd, and let's grab some cheesesteaks. That's right. Classic Philly meetup. Let's do a classic Pats versus Geno challenge. What is that you ask? Well, if you're in Philly on June 23rd for ISTE, then let's meet at Pats King of Cheesesteaks at 6 p.m. And we will eat at Pats and then we will walk across the street and we'll eat some more at Geno's. I'm pretty sure Stacey Lindis will be with me from Podcast PD, AJ Bianco from Podcast PD, and I'm also trying to round up as many other educational podcaster types that I can. And I would love for you to join us and just, I, I want to shake your hand, eat a cheesesteak with you, drink some root beer, and just get the opportunity to hang out in the city of podcast brotherly love. So a couple of you have reached out via email and also on Twitter to let me know that you're going to be in Philly. So I'm looking forward to connecting. Here are the details that you need. And I'll also include these in the emails that I send out to people. And I'll start to promote this also on the social media, in the Facebook group. And also, I'll announce it in the number of episodes that I have left before ISTE 2019. But that's what's happening with the ISTE meetup. A couple of Education Podcast Network announcements here at the top of the podcast. We've got two brand new podcasts on the network. First, the Infused Classroom Podcast which you heard the EPN bumper for at the top of this episode of the show. And that's being hosted by Holly Clark and Tanya Avrith. So definitely want to check that out. One, because they're really good. And number two, that's right, I'm producing it. So it's going to sound good too. And their content is awesome through the first couple of episodes that they've released and I've edited. And they've got a lot of great content 
that's getting ready to come your way. So make sure you subscribe to the Infused Classroom podcast. And also, big shout out, she was a former guest of this very podcast, Dr. Sam Fesich, and she has launched her own podcast, finally, and it is a great podcast that, you know, if you're listening to this and you're a veteran educator, it might not be for you directly to listen to, although it may recharge your batteries, but it's definitely something you're going to want to recommend to new teachers that you come across. And that is the Edu Magic, a podcast for pre-service teachers podcast. So I'm going to have links to both of these out in the show notes at chrisnessy.com slash 132. But I am so excited, one, for the Infused Classroom podcast, and I am really excited for Sam to be launching her podcast, which, to the best of my knowledge, there is nothing out there that directly speaks to the pre-service teacher. So go check that out. Again, links will be in the show notes for this episode. Share these around. And uh, yeah, why don't we check out this episode's recommendation? So for this House of EdTech recommendation, this tip comes to me that I'm passing along to you from my pal Richard Byrne over at freetechforteachers.com. That's freetech, the number four teachers.com. And Richard recently had a post where he talked about how to reuse a Google Forms quiz. So if this is not something you've done, pay attention. So there's two ways you can do this. And this is as per what Rich says. And I agree. So one thing you could do is you could simply make a copy and redistribute a quiz. Now, the only thing that this changes is if you have, say, a link to a quiz, maybe it's a short link and you already linked to the long Google Forms quiz and however you're distributing quiz content, if you make a copy, then that link is going to be different, but it's going to clear out the results and, and whatnot for that quiz that you've used before. Number two, and I think this is the better option, and so I agree with Richard on this, uh, number two is in the area of your quiz editing area, you will see a tab that says responses. And if you've given this quiz, you would see the number of students who've responded. It's like a white number in a little gray box next to the word responses. Now, if you click to view that tab, what you'll then be able to see just over to the right is a little Google Sheets icon. And next to that is the stoplight or the three vertical dots menu for more options. On that menu, you can choose to delete all the responses. But, 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 but before you do that, it is highly recommended that you download the comma separated value file or the CSV file. And this is just a file that you can open in Excel or open up in Google Sheets. And it's the records of that instance of the quiz. So all the questions, the scores, student names, timestamps, the whole thing, you're going to want to download that because once you delete the responses, you, you, you don't get them back. So make sure you download that CSV. Then if you delete the responses, you can continue to use that same URL for the quiz, and now you can collect new responses. Now you can see how this is done uh, in a little screen tutorial that Richard posted on his website, and I will link to that article and that video in the show notes for this episode out at chrisnessy.com slash 132. And before I end this recommendation, I do have an, a former EdTech recommendation update, and I know I previously talked about the website remove.bg. Now, if you don't remember, remove.bg is a website where you can go upload a picture and it strips out the background. They've updated it and it will now remove the background from images with things in it besides people. So let's say you're doing maybe product photography with students or you have them taking pictures of, you know, I don't know, let's say you're doing a project where they got to bring in action figures from home and they take a picture of the GI Joe or, you know, Buzz or Woody, uh, the remove.bg website will now recognize things that are the focus of the picture and they don't necessarily have to be a human being. So that's a really cool update and my students are liking it so far and your students may find value in it too. And if you haven't used it, hey, go to remove.bg and start stripping the background out of your photos today. So my featured content for this episode is 
really the combination of three segments. So it's my featured content, it is my EdTech thought, and it is inspired by somebody who left some feedback for the Just Give It a Try segment. So first, I want to give a nice shout out to Carlos Garza. You might know him on the internet as Mr. G, and he inspired this topic, again, based on a recent post that he made on the Just Give It a Try grid on Flipgrid. Now, just let me sneak in right here and say that if you'd like to participate in that segment, go out to chrisnessy.com slash Flipgrid, and you can either choose one of two grids. One, you can leave feedback for the show, say hello, all those nice things. Or you can leave something on the Just Give It a Try grid, and you can share your story of how you use technology or how you just gave it a try, and I'll share your story here on a future episode. That being said, again, this next clip came to us from Mr. G. So, Mr. G, take it away. Hello, House of EdTech. This is Mr. G. And I want to talk about the word fearless and how it relates to technology isn't difficult. Just give it a try. A lot of the staff that does not want to deal with technology usually is because they are afraid of trying something new. They are afraid of the unknown. I want to know what you think of the term fearless. Think about it. My interpretation of the word fearless is either one, you're not afraid of anything and you will try anything without regard of consequence. Or two, you will not try anything that may instill fear in you to remain fearless. I think that fear is okay as long as you're willing and able to learn from that fear, overcome it, and adapt. So I would say being brave is a better term, overcoming fear. But Am I misunderstanding the term fearless? What is your take on the word fearless? Let me know. I'm Mr. G. Cheers. First and foremost, Mr. G, thank you for contributing. And thank you for putting together a question and some thoughts that have inspired me to basically wrap an entire episode around it. So here we go. Let, let's, let's break this down. And I'm going to use Mr. G's own words to help guide the conversation. So let's run it back and let's get our thoughts together. Well, I have my thoughts together. I'm just going to interject along the way. So once again, Mr. G, let's hear what you have to say. And then I'm going to cut in and add my thoughts throughout. And actually, for those of you who have been a longtime listener, this is something new that I'm trying. So I guess in effect, I am doing something different and I'm going to give it a try and we'll certainly see how it goes. So again, Mr. G, let's hear what you had to say one more time and I'll cut in and out. I want to talk about the word fearless and how it relates to technology isn't difficult. Just give it a try. A lot of the staff that does not want to deal with technology usually is because they are afraid of trying something new. They are afraid of the unknown. I want to know what you think of the term fearless. Yeah. Teachers who don't use technology, or they don't use a lot of it. Can they be afraid? Yes. But I think a lot of times it has to do with, yes, they're afraid, but they just, they don't know, or they don't see the value. And I think that that's something that's very important. You know, when you just come out with initiative after initiative, or maybe you're the tech coach in your building and you get excited about new tools, you kind of have to almost tone it down or, you know, don't, don't be at 11. <laughs> um, and, and I know that I used to be this way where I would want to share everything I heard about. And while I have the gift of gab and, you know, I can speak geek, but I can also speak people. I have learned over the years that it's important to make people feel comfortable. And I can more easily at this point in my career, see when people are intimidated. And a lot of conversations that I go into with colleagues or even when I'm presenting is anticipating that 
they do have reservations about whatever it is I might be talking about or getting ready to share. You know, so if I'm doing a session on podcasting, I know that when a lot of people come into those sessions, I know I got to start really at the ground floor. I can't start with talking about, you know, microphones and all of the intricacies that I've learned over the years. I need to start with what podcast do you listen to? Have you ever done it before? What do you know about audio editing? Have you ever tried to do this? And I try and almost like I would do with a a child student, I want to assess prior learning. So is is there fear involved with that? Yeah, sometimes I I can be scared because I, I want to make a good impression and I want to make people feel comfortable. And, you know, sometimes I'm afraid, you know, do I push people away? Do I scare people when I talk about technology? So I think that there is fear in a couple of ways. And I think there is fear in two aspects. Um, but let's go back to Mr. G. My interpretation of the word fearless is either one, you're not afraid of anything and you will try anything without regard of consequence. I've done that too, where again, I get so excited or I've gotten excited about tools. I'd like to think that everything I've done in my career has been in the best interest of, you know, the teachers I work with or the students that I teach. There have been times where, yeah, I've gotten in trouble and, (laughs) you know, uh, you know, slapped on the wrist, whatever the case may be, where it's, hey, Chris, Mr. Nessie, etc. Slow down. I didn't always go through the proper channels. Could it have been seen as, you know, having reckless abandon? I think so. But I am older. I'm more mature now. You need to realize that, too, is you need to be considerate of others around you. So, Mr. G, what is the second point? You will not try anything that may instill fear in you. Instill fear in me. And again, I'm coming at it from two sides here. I I think that you need to try. You know, I've I've been, this is what I've been preaching, you know, since day one, you know, going along to, to the point of, you know, using technology isn't difficult, just give it a try. You know, it's not, you know, we're not going to break the tools. What we're afraid of is looking dumb in front of students, looking like we're don't know what we're doing in front of colleagues. You know, if, if you've never used a tool before, don't be the first one to volunteer to lead professional development on it. That wouldn't be a wise move. What would be a better alternative would be not having ever used a tool before that maybe you hear about, say, here on this podcast and you bring it back to your social studies department or your science department or your math department. And you say, hey, I heard about this tool on the House of EdTech podcast that you can subscribe to at chrisnessy.com slash subscribe. Just kidding. Not kidding. Yeah, tell people that. You can let people know, I heard about this tool. I've never used it. Why don't we all take a look at it together? There's power in numbers. You know, Scooby and Shaggy, sure, sometimes they got separated from the team every once in a while. Well, really most often, maybe that's a bad example, but let's say they didn't always get separated from the rest of the gang. They would try to solve problems together or really Scooby and Shaggy hardly ever got separated. So find your Shaggy, find your Scooby, find your mystery mobile and get together and and tackle some of this education technology with a friend or friends. You know, there's power in numbers. So I don't think that we need to be afraid of looking unintelligent if we find people who are at the same level as us. And I mean, really as adults, it's, it's really silly to, to be afraid of looking dumb. I know that's easier said than done. Believe me, I get it, but you know, it's something that I personally try to do. I, I, I'll put myself out there. I I will take that risk. And sometimes I get egg egg on my face and sometimes, you know, I'll I'll look, I'll look the hero. I'm, I'm always willing to try. I think that fear is okay as long as you're willing and able to learn from that fear, overcome it, and adapt. So I would say being brave is a better term. And adapting and learning as you go, those are some of the real keys to not only using technology, but to teaching. You know, I, I go through a number of professional developments throughout the course of a school year that relate to instructional strategies. Now, sure, I'm a whiz kid with the technology. I'll be honest, where you might feel fear about education technology, 
I sometimes get intimidated by certain teaching and learning strategies, but I'm still willing to try. You know, I'll take the handouts from a professional development or I'll review the, uh, the presentations or the notes that I take, and I genuinely try to do things. You know, I'm fortunate enough to have an in-class support teacher or two in-class support teachers who I trust and I value their opinion, and we have a good relationship where I know that I can say, hey, let's try this thing that we just heard about in terms of maybe it's a reading strategy or a note-taking or some sort of comprehension or questioning technique. Again, not so much the technology because I'm very confident, sometimes overconfident with that, but what I can relate to is some instructional strategies that I've heard about. Learning from it and trying and reflecting, you know, that's how we grow. And growth is super important. Mr. G, what else you got? Am I misunderstanding the term fearless? What is your take on the word fearless? I like to think that I spoke quite a bit about fear and not being afraid. But fearless, to me, it really doesn't exist for me. Overall. Sure, are there little things, and I I hope I don't sound like I'm contradicting myself, but I don't think that fear is, or being fearless is, the way to think. You might feel that way. I I can't tell you not to feel that way. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be real here. So in terms of podcasting and creating a, a quality program, I, I just, it's you and me right here. Okay. So I, I don't think that fear is something we need to worry about. In, in all honesty, if you get afraid of something with education technology or education or something within this career in this field, it, it's not worth it to be afraid. You know, you really don't have anything to lose. I mean, don't be reckless. Don't lose your job. Don't do inappropriate things with technology, but I I think it's, everything is worth trying, you know, and, and find what works for you. That that's part of what I take away from Jake Miller and the educational duct tape podcast and the whole educational duct tape metaphor, use the right tool for the right job. And, you know, there is more than one tool to do so many different things in the classroom, find the tools that work for you, find the tools that you feel comfortable with, but also be willing to try new tools and build up that, that repertoire have, you know, we don't just have one screwdriver. We have two screwdrivers. You know, I have multiple bits for the different drills that I have in the garage of EdTech. You know, I have a couple of hammers. I have a couple of different rolls of duct tape. I have different size screws and I use the right screw for the right application. If we apply that to the classroom, I think we're going to be better off to be afraid Again, it's not worth it. Empower yourself with knowledge. You listen to this podcast, you read websites, you go on Twitter, you use Instagram, you use Facebook, you connect with people. I mean, if you're not doing any of those things and I'm the only thing that you're doing, thank you, but do more, learn more. Knowledge is power. We've we've known that for such a long time. So empower yourself with knowledge. Listen to more podcasts about education technology. Listen to more podcasts about education. Continue to grow, continue to learn. And the more you put yourself out there in terms of reflecting and growing, the better off you're going to be. The better educator you'll be, the better coach you'll be, the better principal, superintendent, whatever. The more you learn, the better you'll be. And when you have knowledge, there's not a lot of room for fear. Turn that fear into empowerment. That's my thought. That's my featured content. Before we close out this episode, we need, and here's a surprise, I didn't mention it at the top, let's introduce ourselves and let you meet this episode's House of EdTech VIP. This episode's House of EdTech VIP is Dr. Lance McClard. Dr. McClard is an elementary school principal from the Jackson, Missouri area. He blogs at drmcclard.edublogs.org. He is interested in teaching like a pirate, 20% time, makerspaces, G Suite, and more. So if you're not connected with Dr. Lance McClard, make sure you do that. He is on the Twitter at Dr. McClard. D-R-M-C-C-L-A-R-D. And congratulations, Lance. You are 
a House of Ed Tech VIP. Huge thank you for you for listening to this episode of the House of Ed Tech podcast. Keep the conversation going. I want to connect with you, and I would love to hear about your thoughts on what I shared about fear and fearlessness and bravery in ed tech and education as a response to Mr. G's post on the Just Give It a Try Flipgrid. If you want to leave a comment, go to the show notes at chrisnessy.com slash 132, or you can send a message to me by going to chrisnessy.com slash feedback. Now, if you enjoy the House of Ed Tech, do me one favor first and foremost, as soon as this is done playing, go and tell somebody else about the podcast. If you share the podcast on social media, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, use the hashtag House of Ed Tech. The other thing you can do is you could consider becoming an awesome supporter of the show. Many thanks to my awesome supporters and the awesome supporter program, which is powered by Patreon.com. Super huge thank you to Anthony Arnault, host of the New Teacher Podcast, which you can find at newteacher.org. Eric Kurtz from Control Alt Achieve and Control Alt Achieve the Podcast out at controlaltachieve.com. Super shout out to you, Eric. I've been enjoying the show. Keep it up, my friend. Dan Gallagher from gallagertech.edublogs.org. Mr. G, host of the Ace Tech Podcast, which you can find at ace.tech. Peggy George from Classroom 2.0 Live. Jen Giffen from Shooks and Giff the Podcast. Find more at bit.ly slash Shooks and Giff. Jeff Herb from InstructionalTechTalk.com. Mike Messner. Find him on Twitter at TeacherMike72. And my boy, JP Prezavento, host of the Bits and Bytes of Education podcast over on JPPrez.com. Lynn Smargis, how are you? Thanks for being awesome. Connect with Lynn at Lynn Smargis on Twitter. And my pal from New Jersey, Scott Titmus. Thank you, Scott, for your awesome feedback. The other day, I'm glad the podcast is helping you on your commute. I hope you enjoyed this episode as well. Connect with Scott at SD Titmus on Twitter. And my pal from the Midwest, Kyle Wilcox. Find him on Twitter at Level Up Ed Tech. Thank you to all of my awesome supporters. If you are interested in being awesome, go to chrisnessy.com slash awesome and you can join today. The next episode of the podcast will be episode 133 and that is going to come your way right into your earbuds or your car stereo on May 19th, 2019. Until next time, thank you for not being afraid and thank you for learning with me. And remember, using technology isn't difficult. Just give it a try. Thank you.